One day, while a Burmese woman by the name of Ma Tan Sen was sitting doing breath meditation, she had an extraordinary experience. She entered into a deep state of concentration when suddenly her body seemed to split into two. She felt as if one part of her body was dead while the other part was still alive. She then felt her body ascend into the sky going higher and higher. She then says that she came face to face with a person that she calls a Buddhist wizard. The Buddhist wizard said, Hey, I didn't call for you yet. Go back to where you came from. Startled, she began descending downward until she found herself whole again, alert and sitting right back in the same spot where she began her meditation. Over the next several months, she came to realize that after this experience, she had gained several supernatural powers. Now, there's a lot to unpack with regards to this story, and we'll get to it. But before we begin talking about breath meditation and superpowers, we should probably start talking about Buddhist wizards. Admittedly, Buddhist wizards isn't necessarily something you think of when you imagine Buddhism or Buddhist meditation. Perhaps when you hear the term Buddhist wizard, you may think of something like this. Or maybe something like this. Well, yes and no. As you can see here, this is a photo of an actual Burmese Buddhist wizard, complete with his magic wand. And here are a couple more photos of some very famous and revered Burmese Buddhist wizards. Simply put, a Burmese Buddhist wizard is anyone who has gained supernatural powers and has transformed him or herself into a semi-divine being through specific practices that involved alchemy, uh, creation and use of magical spells, like we see here in this photo, and all sorts of other types of meditation practices. And they use these supernatural powers to manipulate the natural world around them, to enact changes for the benefits of their followers, as well as for the protection and propagation of the Buddhist religion. Becoming a Buddhist wizard requires years of rigorous and disciplined training to master a specific form of technical knowledge, which is aimed at gaining supernatural powers for manipulating the physical and psychical worlds around them. Ideally, it's also to help others, to help propagate the Buddha's religion, and eventually attain full enlightenment. Wizard is the English translation of the Pali word vidya, and the Burmese pronunciation of vidya is something like weiza. And the word vidya, or the Burmese pronunciation of it, weiza, means essentially a master of spells. And those who aspire to this mastery are said to traverse along the wizard path. And yes, the Burmese actually use the English word wizard. As we can see here, this is a very famous, recently deceased Buddhist wizard who referred to his house as the wizard home. Becoming a Buddhist wizard requires years and perhaps even lifetimes of rigorous and disciplined training to master a specific form of technical knowledge aimed at gaining supernatural powers. These methods range from alchemy, the recitation of sacred spells, drawing of magical diagrams, but probably the most popular is the meditation, and specifically meditation on breath. Perhaps the kind of Buddhist breath meditation you may have in mind has to do more with being in the present moment or reducing stress or high blood pressure. What is interesting, though, is that this perception of Buddhist breath meditation actually owes a lot to the Burmese Buddhist meditation tradition. Some of these Burmese meditation practices and traditions were exported to the West in the 1970s and 80s. 
And while this kind of meditation is also practiced in Myanmar and, and quite popular, the majority of meditators engage in variations on this type of breath meditation. And they actually go on to get quite creative and innovative in developing their own personal techniques. Some techniques involve counting their breaths for extended periods of time, matching their breaths with a particular mantra or word, engaging in kinds of visualization practices, tactile sensations as the breath moves around their body, as well as dozens, if not hundreds, of more practices. Practices that all supposedly lead to the attainment of supernatural powers. Indeed, these Buddhist wizards and the supernatural powers that one could gain by doing prolonged periods of breath meditation are what had first attracted me to the country of Myanmar in the first place many, many years ago. Unfortunately, I never did figure out how to do such amazing things like fly, walk on water, or any of the other extraordinary powers I expected to quickly attain when starting out in doing these breath meditation practices that I learned in Myanmar. But I did go on for the next 20 years or so to continue my research on these wizards, their followers, and their meditation practices. I met with many people who believe themselves to have gained supernatural powers simply from doing prolonged periods of breath meditation. Two powers that are reportedly quite common when engaging in this kind of breath meditation for prolonged periods of time include clairaudience and clairvoyance. Indeed, these are the two powers that Ma Tan Sen, the woman whose story began this video, believes to have obtained. She believes that her powers have come to her because of her meditation practice over the years, as well as given to her by the Buddhist wizard that she met in this visionary or out-of-body experience. Other powers include flying, walking on water, sinking into solid ground, making oneself invisible, and passing through solid objects. I should point out that the use of breath in meditation is not so much awareness of its movement through the body, although there are people who do practice this, but rather meditators use the breath as an object to place their focus on and then go on to enter into intense states of concentrations. And from these intense states of concentrations are from where these powers emerge. The practices are much too complicated and variegated to go into now here, but handbooks and manuals for how to gain these supernatural powers through specifically doing breath meditation are published in Myanmar and are widely found in all bookshops and newsstands. One can purchase hundred page handbooks, detailed manuals, and even short articles in monthly magazines can be read for how to gain these powers through breath meditation. I've also had Burmese Muslim and Christian friends tell me that they too have gained supernatural powers by practicing Buddhist breath meditation. One Muslim friend told me that he decided to give Buddhist breath meditation a try after some of his Buddhist colleagues suggested it. He was amazed that he had gained the power to see things happening before they actually did. He said that a clear mirror-like circle often appears in his vision and he can foretell things as they appear in this mirror-like circle. There's the tendency by those unfamiliar with these practices and traditions to characterize it as occultish, otherworldly, esoteric, exotic, and perhaps even a bit bizarre. But my research has shown that people who belong to these traditions aspire to gain supernatural powers, and practice these meditation techniques are people who lead quite ordinary lives. They go to work in the morning, return home, perhaps attend some activities in the evening or on the weekend that are associated with their wizard communities, 
or simply incorporate their practices into their daily lives. Although I no longer desire supernatural powers, although I won't complain if I somehow stumble upon them, I still continue with many of the breath meditation techniques I learned over the years from some self-proclaimed Buddhist wizards and their followers, if for nothing else than to gain some peace of mind, and that in itself would be a miracle. <laughs>